Sony just released a PS5 update that you need to get right now. Actually, you don't even need to download it because Sony released this in a software update months ago and they just flicked the switch. So now you can actually have VRR on your PlayStation 5, which stands for variable refresh rate. And normally in a scenario like with a regular GPU, I have one around here. Variable refresh rate allows the GPU to put out whatever frames it wants, and then the monitor or display you're using can match its refresh rate to the FPS so that you don't get choppiness and tearing and a whole bunch of bad goodness on your system that you don't like to see when you're playing video games. NVIDIA calls their technology G-Sync, AMD calls their FreeSync, but they're all a version of VRR, which doesn't sound like it improves frame rate but it absolutely does. It can actually increase the FPS in some of the games on the PS5 by about 30 to 60 FPS. It's a crazy setup. Because what's happened is the PS5 is actually capable of doing really decent frame rates in some of these games, but it can't lock it steady at say something like 90 FPS. Instead, something like a Ratchet and Clank can run between 60 and 90 FPS, but that's a worse experience without VRR because it can get choppy, the screen can tear, it looks bad. So the VRR update for the game makes it so they unlock the frame rate so that the PS5 can use its max horsepower and give you the optimal frame rate. Now VRR is actually something that has to be supported by your console, by your cable, as well as by the display you have. This is probably the cheapest HDMI 2.1 VRR display that you can get on the market, which we covered in a video right up there that you can check out. You'll also need an HDMI 2.1 cable in order to enable the variable refresh rate. And one of the things to note is that yes, Sony is now finally implementing variable refresh rate. Xbox has had this for years. I'm like, I'm glad Sony has it now, but like, they should have released this a long time ago. So let's take a look at a few of the games that already have a VRR update and see if it's worth it for you to enable this on your system. Your TV doesn't support VRR? Oh. The capture card doesn't support VRR. So we can't use the capture card because the only capture card that supports variable refresh right now, right now is that new Elgato HD60X. So I can't use the capture card. We'll just have to show it on screen, which is not good. That makes it worse. So even though you don't need an update for your PS5 to get all of this rolling, the games themselves need to update in order to support VRR, which thankfully Marvel Spider-Man Remastered actually does. And what people have found is that when you go into the game and you go into ray trace performance mode, normally it was locked down to 60 FPS, but now it gets all the way up to 96 FPS, which is nearly a 50% improvement. And especially in this game, it made it so that they have 120 Hertz mode, which gives better input latency and enables auto higher frame rates, which is just a better thing for the PlayStation all around. And other games like Spider-Man's Miles Morales, what they're finding is that the improvement's not as high. It gets up to 70 FPS instead of 60, but that's still a 16% bump for just a free update. And then in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, because this is a native PS5 game, it's not a cross-platform one, what they're finding is that it can reach up to 110 FPS in performance mode, which is higher than the 60 FPS that it was locked at at one point. That is almost double for just a free update that Sony has now rolled out. So even though you don't need a PlayStation 5 update for this, you will need official game updates for it. And currently there are only 14 games out there that support the VRR update, but there are more coming soon. So to turn it on and get this enabled for yourself is remarkably simple. Remember you do need the game update, but you go over to the settings into PS5, you scroll on down to screen and video, and then over here you have VRR. Then you turn that on to automatic. It's gonna refresh. And then you can also toggle on apply VRR for PS5 games, even though they might support it. This may improve video quality for some games. Turn this off if you experience some unexpected behavior. Now this could allow you to have a much better experience in a game like Elden Ring, which is horribly optimized, drops down to 40 frames per second at some time, and can create a really noticeable screen tearing effect because the frame rate's all over the place. Turning on VRR, even though it's not supported, might not unlock anything, but it should help to smooth out the experience. Again, this is something Microsoft has had on the Xbox forever, and now Sony finally has it. Go turn it on for yourselves.